My name is Dr. Michael Luan, and my passion is connecting people to their neocortical brain. And how I do this is to ask them a simple task, and that is just to smile up. Because once you connect to your neocortical brain, you have connected into your passions. I'm waiting. The smile up it has a huge impact on your central nervous system is, and is not just an expression of happiness, it is an, a circuit opening behavior. This is the same face with two different facial expressions. The irony is that your own central nervous system reads the expression on your face, whether you put it there intentionally or not. There are two portions of the brain, the primitive brain and the neocortical brain. The primitive brain is, has, has two components, the reptilian brain, and the limbic system, and it's associated with drama, emotion, survival, and that's why it's associated with sympathetic fright flight. The neocortical brain, on the other hand, is involved with collaboration, connecting, and thriving, and is into alternative fuel sources. The, so the parasympathetic nerve system has a strong tie to the neocortical brain. The two halves of the brain behave differently, like, it's like listening to a dog bark all night, it'll put you into fright flight, and falling in love is more parasympathetic or neocortical. Frowning down instead of smiling is confusing to the environment as well as your central nervous system. It activates primitive brain patterns and puts the body into a ready state with peak cortisol and adrenaline levels. Smiling up, on the other hand, connects to the environment and your central nervous system. It is the fastest way for us to connect to the neocortical brain and encourages it the endocrine system. And that's Jessica Alba. She's my girl. <laughs> the next uh, slide is a spectrum of what we exist in and what we fluctuate between the two extremes, and it's coming up. There it is. The left is a sympathetic pattern, and it's the primitive brain pattern that comes with frowning. And you'll notice it is a complete pattern with flat feet, tucked tail, rounded shoulders, pendulous abdomen, a frown but it's highly associated with learning disabilities and neural disorganization. Let's take a closer look. You can see the flattening of the feet, the tucking of the tail, and the rounding of the shoulders, but the abdomen and homolateral movement, that same side, same side movement. The other end of the spectra is the right half of the diagram, and it's the parasympathetic pattern and the neocortical pattern. This is where we breathe and smile from. It's on toe. Movements are through the hips, the shoulder blades are down and back, the abs are stabilized, and we're smiling up. This is a thriving pattern, but this is also the pattern that we send our message out into the world. The next slide is an example of, or a global example of what you can do wrong. This is how six men projected an abysmal product in the world. <laughs> it looked more like a proctological examination and sent a message before the product was released about how bad it was. <laughs> Arnold Schwarzenegger, accidentally uh, who is known for his body, accidentally branded a frown. His body followed suit because it's all part of a complex pattern. Form follows energy, and his energy followed the frown, and so did his tissues. While on the other hand, Dara Torres, branded smiling up and passion. This is her 24 years apart. First picture is at the LA Olympics in 1984, the second one's in Beijing Olympics after she won the silver medal. Your body follows the behaviors you invest into. So here is a more practical example coming up around the corner, any old time. There it is. This is what I call the bashful Adam and Eve. This is where we cover up our genitalia, we round our shoulders, let our abdomen go pendulous, and we tuck our tail. After 45 minutes of purposeful exercising, this woman put a smile back on her own face and found the passion to be a great lawyer. Combining smiles with poor posture and poor body language, or combining a smile with poor body language is confusing to the environment and your central nervous systems. You don't know if you're cold or if you're afraid. It stops people from listening to you, and more importantly, stop opening up to you. And the worst part is you created it yourself. Smiling up activates your central nervous system and opens other people's heart. Smiling up stimulates mirror neurons in other people so their neocortical brains open to their own passion. And it causes a massive release of brain-derived neurotrophic factor which cements it into the neocortical brain. 
Once we are smiling up, we can find our passions. And we could create behaviors that motivate uh, ourselves and others for a lifetime, no matter what we were faced with down the road. This woman was faced and beat cancer, and now she's doing things I can't even do. And she's smiling about it. National Geographic predicts us living to the age of 120. And this could be a blessing or a curse, but it does mean we have to start maintaining the body now. Create and believe in the life that you want to make, and then smile up for your whole life. Body language is yours to create over a lifetime. Waiting for the next slide. What are you going to care about at the end of your life? Will your face tell the story of achieving your passion or failing? Life is uh, based on choice, so smile up. May it be based on love and passion, but remember, waiting for a slide to change, it has to be practice. It doesn't happen by accident. This is the biggest message. Let your face tell the story. Let your face know how to wrinkle, because it's going to anyway, in a smile. Smile up because it has a bigger impact on this world than you think. It connects you to your neocortical brain, and the neocortical brain will connect you to the passions that you're to bring into this world. And quite frankly, I think we need more genuine smiles in this world. So smile up, share your passions, share your brains. Thank you for listening. I'm Dr. Michael Luan.